It's an autumn tradition at the Defense Information School that goes back to, well, before this broadcaster got his military career started. On this early Friday morning, it's Dinfos' annual toilet bowl pitting the air and land forces against the sea services. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, Fort Meade celebrates Public Lands Day, news from the chapel, and a preview of this year's Army-Navy game. But first, October is National Disability Awareness Month. In recognition of the month, the Defense Media Activity hosted an open house to highlight opportunities available at the activity. And what we're doing is we're trying to get the word of DMA out to the community. We're trying to work with the community, let them know that we are an inclusive organization, and we do want to go ahead and work with them uh, as well as for them. And it's basically a twofold. It's education, educating them about defense media activity to let them know who we are and what we can do for them as the community and for the Department of Defense. And also it is a recruitment, uh, whereas we're not hiring on the spot, but we're letting them know uh, this is an opportunity for them to work at the defense media activity or elsewhere in the government. The open house included briefings and demonstrations on how to apply for government jobs for those with disabilities. The Garrison Equal Opportunity Office, the Defense Information Systems Agency, and NWR were among those participating and offering support. We have a lot of people here that's working with us to make this successful. But like I said, we want to get our name out there. We want individuals to know, hey, we're here. You know, we want you to work with us. And uh, we want to work for the community and with the community. You know, we just want to integrate the uh, de defense media activity as well as the community around us. Doing something like this is part of giving back. It's helping the community let you know, hey, we do love you. We, we do love you. We do want you here. We do want to work together. In other news, for the second straight year, Fort Meade has earned a grant for National Public Lands Day. We happened to hold it last year too. Um, it's a, a grant called the National Public Lands Day Grant. It's a partnership with DOD and an organization called the National Environmental Education Foundation, NEEF. Um, and we applied last year, we did it last year, and we decided we'd do it again this year. It's not necessarily annual, but it's may become that. This year the grant is being used to repair and restore about 100 feet of the Burbot Lake shoreline. The Directorate of Public Works organized a volunteer effort recently to place biologs along eroded sections of shoreline. Mitch Kyler from the Public Works Environmental Division explains how the logs work. By learning that a riparian buffer serves a function, filters out uh, nutrients, uh, it holds sediments in, it provides uh, habitat for wildlife, and it provides food in the food chain for the aquatic organisms in the water. So people look at these shorelines, they go, oh man, that looks horrible. You know, we should mow it right up to the edge or something like that. That's not correct. And it doesn't benefit a lake environment like Burba Lake all that much uh, to have it that way. National Public Lands Day is the largest national volunteer event in the country. Every year, two to 300,000 people work on environmental projects just like this one at Burba Lake. Elsewhere, a brief reminder, the Combined Federal Campaign, or CFC, is underway. This year's theme is Show Some Love. If your unit hasn't appointed a CFC key worker yet, training is coming up Thursday, November 1st from 9 to 1030 at Army Community Services on Chisholm Avenue. For more information, call ACS at 301-677-5590 or go to cbacfc.org. Meanwhile, I have a couple of reminders from the Installation Chapel. Let's start with the chapel's Halloween alternative, the Hallelujah Festival. It's coming up on the 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Fort Meade Pavilion. There will be snacks, games, door prizes, and of course, plenty of candy. Better yet, it's all free. The chapel only has one request, no gory, violent, or death-related costumes, please. Also from the chapel, the Gospel Congregation invites everyone to their annual Prayer Night Harvest Festival Revival. It's November 14th through the 16th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Argonne Hills Chapel Center. For more information on chapel programs, call 301-677-6703. We close this week with a preview of this year's Army-Navy football game. The game, sponsored by the Central Maryland Chamber of Commerce and MWR, is coming up Tuesday, November 6th on Mullins Field. Last year, the Army splashed their way to a 19-13 win in a steady rain. And the weather forecast for the 19th annual game this year? Well, it is Maryland, and things change all the time. In any case, the game seems to get a little bigger every year with more food, prizes, and of course, great football. Army-Navy, November 6th, Mullins Field. Tailgate starts at 3, kickoff 345. That's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.